I made a drawing yesterday of how the stove is going to look. Uh, I think that explains it better. So here it is. The stove's here in the middle. Wood storage next to it under the stairs. Um, this is the clean out door. This is an air intake. There's another clean out door going to be here on the side. So that's why I put a shelf there. Some things to hang up like a scoop, like cleaning material. And perhaps some metering that would be interesting to know how hot the stove gets. But I'm not sure if I can build it in there. Uh, the top stays open for a while. Because from here I want to slide in that water tank that I still have to make. But that's an option that goes on the back probably. Front is going to be all uh, natural stone, so the same as the walls. Stairs are going straight down here and that makes a turn right here. That's the complicated bit. Um, yeah, quite a big job. I'll see how long it's going to take. Masonry stove has arrived. This is half of it because it's very heavy. In total, 1600 kilograms. So that's over 3000 pounds. And mostly heat resistant concrete pieces. It's basically a self built. So it's like a jigsaw all fitting together. Um, I'll show some drawings and explain a little bit what, what a masonry stove actually is. But I'm um, glad it finally arrived. So these are the most common uh, types of wood stoves or fireplaces. Uh, an open fireplace, you don't see that very much anymore because it's not efficient at all. Most of the heat is actually going through the chimney and out of the house. An iron stove, cast iron or steel is much more common because it heats up quite quickly and it heats the house quite efficiently. A lot of heat is also in the chimney so that's why you often see chimney pipes going through several rooms um, but once the fire dies off it cools off fairly quickly and that's the difference with a masonry stove the more mass you have and the longer the flue is um, the more efficient it becomes so from the firebox you make you build a very hot fire in here it goes through the oven then it splits here it goes down and it goes down here before it goes comes together in the chimney and goes out of the house once the flue is here it's already pretty much cooled off because all of that heat is given off to the masonry part that slowly radiates the heat into the home pretty similar as the underfloor heating that heats a floor slab like a concrete slab and slowly it radiates uh, into the house
made air to make it airtight. Yes, okay. It's not so much structurally. Glock is kind of all interlocks. Yeah, it's yeah. like Lego. Making a shopping list for the chimney and the stove built up, so I need bricks, a lot of bricks, and pipes, stainless steel, inside and outside is going to be copper. Also, when the
bricks uh, to build up the stairs framework. It's not going to be visible because the front facing is going to be natural stone, like the walls. Quick explanation about this, because this is the core where the fire is in and that needs to be able to expand because it gets very hot. In between here is ceramic fiber which is some kind of insulation material which creates a gasket um, so it can expand. So this will get about 1000 degrees Celsius when the fire is hot so it needs to be able to expand horizontally and vertically. The air goes down through these channels, and then in the chimney. So when the air is already here, it's not that hot anymore. So they need to be able to move individually. Around here is going to be like a cardboard spacer, which will eventually disintegrate. So you have space here, and you have space here. So things are able to move. Because if you don't do that, if you just build it as one piece, it will expand and it will crack and eventually it will leak, so that's a problem. But that's the reason why it's done like that. In the same way the lid, kind of floating on top, held together by gravity. Uh, yeah, and the tape is keeping these downdraft channels together, but will eventually disintegrate because it will be kept together by the facade, which is also on the sides, which you'll all see next week.
nice. All the way. Nah, I came up close to the car and said, Can I walk in? Yeah, you can walk in. How are you? I'm confused as you know. Oh, this is my turn. Yeah, so we can only use one step from here. It's kind of like if you keep it straight, you have to go very slow. Slowly knock it.
Yeah, if you see the old city centers here, Turin, all the pavement is hammered like this, and steps. It's a nice look. All right, I've got seven steps ready. Uh, three more to go. Straight across here, yeah? Yeah, no, but really on the line, so don't add what I was just saying, just really take this one. Oh, so don't add four, because yeah. otherwise this won't be thick enough.
made a second fire. Uh, yesterday's fire uh, went well. Draft is good. Uh, barely heated up the place because everything is still wet. Uh, the bricks are still wet, so I have to make small fires. Slowly dry it out. But um, it got to about 7 degrees yesterday. Outside it's just freezing. And uh, in the morning it was still 7 degrees. Like 9 hours after the fire was went out. So temperature curve is very good. Um, let's make another fire, just warm it up slowly. I'm still building it up so I can make a big fire. But it looks good. It's a beautiful fire, you know. Stack the wood, light it up, close the door, and you're done. You don't have to do anything.
stove is working really well. It's always the same temperature in the house now. It's really stable, which is just comfortable. Right now, I just checked, it was about 16, a little over 16 degrees Celsius, which seems cold, but it feels warmer than that. Normally, with normal central heating, I want it up to 20, 21, but strangely enough, that's what it measures. Maybe because it measures closer to the walls, which are colder. I don't know. But um, I'm doing one fire a day now, and not very big fires because it's quite a warm week, it's a bit warmer outside. Right now, five degrees Celsius in the evening. And um, yeah, fire in the evening, and then in the morning, it's still the same temperature. It's very constant. Um, they look like, uh, they are quite big fires. If you would make a fire this big in a cast iron, like a normal wood stove, it would just get too hot in the house, right? Because cast iron gives off its heat quickly and very fast. But here, all that heat of the fire first goes in the stones and then later it's been given off in the room. So that's why these stoves are designed to build, to make one fire that burns off in one or two hours, depending on the amount of wood that's in. And it doesn't get too hot. When the fire is hot, it gets hot right here, but all that energy is given off to the stones. Um, fire is just on, and this is still warm from the previous night. Maybe we can see by this infrared meter. So it's always most hot right here. At the moment, not very hot. 41 degrees Celsius, so that's 105 Fahrenheit. Here it's a little bit cooler, 37, so that's 100 Fahrenheit, and if we go here, 29 degrees, so it slowly cools off, 18 degrees, still higher than room temperature, right? These walls are 17 degrees, not that cold if we go down, but these are deep in the ground, so yeah, 17 degrees. I think the ones over there are colder. Yeah, those are 13. Um, yeah, so dinner is ready in a bit and I'm going to sit in front of the fire and it's always like a really nice moment of the day when the fire is on. Because it's a beautiful fire to look at. That glass door always stays clean and that um, the doors are part of the tempcast kit, right? So the core and the doors and the, uh, the other parts are part of the kit and then this you have to build yourself. But um, there's actually through the air intake, better have to show it here. So this is the air intake door. Um, goes up right here and this bit right here it blows it onto the fire so it goes it's blowing through those locks to the top um, and also it's going through the door frame down here uh, and they've done it like that so it keeps the glass nice and clean I've never had to clean this one I have to clean the one on top because right now you can't see anything uh, but this stays nice and clean which is really nice Oven door is now 90 degrees. It will get about to about 250 or something. And the stone will get hotter. I think at the end of this fire lap, 300 degrees Celsius. So you can bake a bread after. And if I stack it up higher, some more wood, uh, I can probably get 400 degrees Celsius in the oven. So that's perfect if I want to make a pizza just after the fire. It's just really nice. And then through the night, it will stay warm, so you can also do a stew just much later. If you make, for example, a fire in the morning, you can cook a stew end of the day. It will be hot all day.